Hey everyone, it's Nicholas Wilton at art to life and today I want to talk to you about kind of coming back to your art after an absence. Uh, it's after Labor Day <clears throat> and uh, you know a lot of people have been away and and you're kind of coming back and if you're like me, which I is exactly what's happened to me, is that you come into your studio and it you know it's like how you were working, you were on this rhythm before and now you're you're kind of not in a rhythm and what can happen is that you can stop and you can postpone and you can start doing a lot of things uh, instead of your art just sort of as, as, as a, well, almost a form of procrastination but um, you know it's it's interesting and this relates I mean I, I do a lot of running and sometimes I'll get injured or um, my life gets in such a way that I'm not able to do this and, and when you stop you you lose your fitness pretty quickly and it gets harder to, to do this activity, which is really fun when you're in shape. And it's even harder to do it with people. And this showed up for me this morning. You know, I was, I met some friends and I kind of forced myself to go, but I knew that it was not going to be very pleasant because I hadn't run so long and they have been continuing to run. And, and, and it was just as I thought it was hard. And, but the, the lesson in this is that you go anyway, and I've just noticed like it never improves. The conditions never improve if you wait. You think like it's at some point it's going to be better, but it only gets worse. So it's best to just jump in and start again. And it's more the action of taking action and doing something um, and, and beginning again. And this totally relates to coming back into your art um, after an absence. And you aren't going to be in the flow like you were before. You possibly, you know, are going to be unsure your confidence isn't as high because you don't have any proof of your art. You've just been away from it. Sometimes I feel like I'm a, just a stranger in my studio when I come back after a few weeks. I don't know if some of you can relate to that. Um, but here's the act. Here's here's the here's a couple ideas that can be helpful for this. Um, the first one is to take action. And I love the idea of it that you take imperfect, imperfect action. Action, do something, but allow it to be, it's not perfect, it's not that great, it's just imperfect action. <laughs> but it is something, there's an evidence that something occurred. When you make something, when you start something um, and make a mark as opposed to planning what you're going to do for a couple days or like waiting. I, I really need to get inspiration. I'll like go to some museums or I'll call my friends or I'll go to their studio or, you know, there's a lot of things we can do in preparation for taking action, but they don't actually, they're not as effective as doing something. That's what lights you up and that's, that is an actual item. Something that moves the needle will um, take you quicker and bring you back into it. The next idea is that this isn't, it is never convenient to make art, you know. Uh, it's never, it's never really easy and we forget this when we look back and we think, oh God, I was just making art, it just seems so effortless. It's, <clears throat> it takes a commitment and remembering that, that you don't have to uh, do a huge, huge effort, but just a commitment to just step into that commitment and say, I'm going to make something, a small effort, a small mark, begin something. And that, you know, when you make something, when you create something, even a start or a lay-in or anything that you can see, you see that and it creates this like ripple effect visually and, and emotionally for you and for other people. You know, someone will come in your studio and say, wow, that's kind of a different for you or whatever. You have a call and response has begun and that's the entry in back into your work so we have to be gentle with ourselves and allow ourselves this imperfect imperfect action to to like let things not be as good it's okay we're coming back into it, it we're coming into the commitment the next little idea that can be helpful <clears throat> which i totally use this is my go-to is this uh strategy of play play just don't worry, but play and experiment in the beginning. And this is perfect because 
you can do that easily. The stakes are low. And if you categorize it as, well, I'm just playing right now, um, your brain doesn't know the difference. In fact, it prefers to think of things as play. You'll be looser, you'll be fresher, your work won't be as pretentious, and it just feels more like you. When we play, we're actually tapping into our creativity in a really direct way, and it, it makes marks and, and art that's really, really personal. So that's a fantastic um, reframe that you can use to, uh, to circle back into your art. If you've been away, you know, away on vacation or... Um, because there's a risk. There's a risk that two weeks will turn into four weeks, which will turn into six weeks, which will, will turn into four months. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but it becomes a bigger and bigger gap um, for yourself. And, and we tend to pile, you know, when things are going well, it feeds us. But the opposite is true when we don't have any evidence of our art making. Our confidence kind of lowers and shrinks. We're creative people and we need that fuel. We need that to keep going. That's the, that's the commitment to the practice. That's why it's so, so important. Um, so anyway, so that let me know if this resonates for you. I'd love to hear in the comments, like, what are the actions you've taken? You know, like, what are the things that you actually did that made a difference? Forget about the notes and the plans and the ideas and all the things that nobody can see. What is the one thing? Did you get up? Did you change it? Did you, you know, do something that causes an effect, that causes a ripple, that just the universe feels that? Those are the kind of things that move the ball down the field for your career. Um, I'd love to hear your responses. And by the way, this shirt I'm wearing, uh, I wore this a few weeks ago <clears throat> and uh, got a bunch of comments about people who were interested in it. Um, so uh, I called our rep because we sell some LEA project, um um, products on our website. What we use, what I use a lot, is the Sennelier oil pastel and the Sennelier oil sticks. And uh, anyway, I talked to them and I said, hey, these guys want some of these shirts. So we're going to give away two of these shirts to two people. You know, we're going to give a shirt to two people. Uh, we'll look at the comments and we'll randomly choose based on the creativity of your responses. So go ahead and comment and then um, Next week, I'll announce this and, and we'll get you guys a shirt. But we, I'll need to know your sizes as well. So uh, it's really great. The folks over at Art Savoir Fair, uh, there's a little link down there. If you go check out their Instagram account, they're the ones that, um, that uh, represent this amazing product. And Sennelier 1887, there's a link there too for Instagram. Uh, this company's been around since 1887. These were designed and asked for and created by um, Picasso, I believe, because he wanted a loose drawing oil stick. Anyway, I use a ton of these. Um, the difference is, uh, you know, let me just dive into this a little because it, it's important. Oil pastels are, um, they don't dry. They, they need a, they're, they're just, I think it's like mineral oil and pigment. They're fantastic. <clears throat> but you need to use some kind of medium on top of it or mixing, you know, like if you mix it in with oil paint, that'll work because the oil medium will bind it. The oil sticks are the same kind of thing, but they dry. They have a dryer in them, so you can make marks and those will dry. Neither of these um, work underneath acrylic uh, very well because oil and, and acrylic don't mix so well. Um, you can put oil pastel on top of acrylic, but you can't go the other way. Anyway, go ahead and leave a comment. Um, I hope your, uh, your vacations and your summer and everything has been going great. And I hope your Sunday especially is really good today in the studio. Thanks so much. Okay.